report is arbitrary. He went on to say that releasing the full report would, quote, break the law by releasing it without redactions. Um, I, I remember after the Star report was done when, you know, boxes and boxes of documents were loaded up and driven over to Congress. Uh, is Representative Collins right that it would be illegal to give Congress an unredacted report? I don't think so. I, I think that there are probably procedural steps that need to be taken uh, in order to secure the approval of the courts to give, for example, grand jury material. But that's precisely the step that Ken Starr took uh, in order to provide material to Congress. And that's precisely the step that Leon Jaworski took in order to provide material to Congress. Mm -hmm. What's different here is the apparent decision or the seeming decision of the attorney general not to take the same step that has been taken in the past, namely to make as much of the grand jury information as is possible available to Congress for its consideration of its own oversight responsibilities. So the four reasons that, that Barr has given for these redactions are grand jury material, sensitive intelligence, um, information about ongoing investigations, and then anything that would sort of sully the reputation of someone who is a peripheral third party. Do you agree with all four of his points there that those four things should be redacted, even in a version that goes to Congress? No, I think they should be taken, con taken into consideration. Certainly, the grand jury material can be released with an order of the court, and if Barr wishes to, he could seek one and would, would secure one. Uh, with respect to ongoing investigations, uh, it's clearly the case that we could provide information to Congress effectively confidentially or in camera, uh, and such that it wasn't going to make it into the public sphere. Uh, indeed, uh, that's done quite routinely in the intelligence committees, for example. Likewise, with respect to the uh, uh, information relating to uh, sources and methods of our intelligence investigations, Congress right. is entitled to know that just in a, in a confidential way. For, for anyone that may have missed um, your quotes in USA Today, which I thought were really interesting about this, this stood out to me. Quote, you write, in many ways, I think the important thing is not so much the report as it is the backup material. Tell me why. Make the case. Well, you know, the report is going to be between 300 and 400 pages, we know. And that's a lot of information. But it, too, is just a recitation and a summary of the evidence that Mr. Mueller has collected. Mm -hmm. And it's looked at, in Mr. Mueller's case, through the prism of a possible criminal investigation. Lying behind that, we are told, are hundreds and hundreds of interviews, thousands and thousands of, of subpoenas, and probably tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of pages of documents, all of which are relevant to Congress's inquiry uh, into uh, its oversight responsibilities and the fitness of the president. That's why when Ken Starr, for example, uh, provided the Congress with a, a couple hundred pages of report summarizing uh, his investigation, he also provided, as, as you said in the opening, uh, hundreds of boxes of material yeah. that had been collected over the course of the previous year's uh, investigation that were relevant to the inquiry. Paul uh, Rosenzweig, it's great to have